In November of 2006, LG launches their Envy phone line each of them unique and inspired by the previous. A snapshot of a great evolution in phone technology, informed by trends of the time including full QWERTY keyboards and a clamshell design that we'd see slowly disappear from the form lexicon just a few years later. We plan to cover all these phones eventually, but for now we're starting with the Genesis Point, the LG NV VX9900. The VX9900 was released in 2006. It has a clamshell design, a simple keypad form whenever it's closed, and a QWERTY keypad form whenever it's open. It features a 320 by 240 display, a micro SD card slot, a 950 milliamp hour battery, a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a two megapixel camera. This could have been seen as Verizon's answer to the T-Mobile sidekick. Except with a more mature look to it. Right, right. The screen outside is small and very prone to scratches, as evident by this uh, more used model of the phone that we have. To me, the most immediate thing about this phone is the camera on the back and the lens cover. It's because it sticks out of the phone. It sticks out of the phone. It's like hulking and it's massive on yeah. the back. Whenever you're typing, you can always feel the camera underneath where you're resting your fingers on the back of the phone. Yeah, and it has this lens cap that swivels right. and it's always moving and you can feel it with your yeah. fingers. And then also the phone will never sit flush on like a table. It'll always rock back and forth. But what's most important about this phone is the button feel in both forms. With this being a QWERTY keyboard phone, you, you definitely want to get a good and responsive feel out of those keys. And you do. They have a satisfying click. They're fairly spaced apart, so it's easy to use. I would say the only issue is when it's plugged into the wall, like in the charging port, it is very difficult to use because your left hand is slightly lower than your right hand. Yeah. Really, the only thing I don't like about the keyboard itself is the D-pad. Right. The D-pad is very flat and it feels spongy. You know what I mean? It's too flush with the phone itself. It, it, it's yeah. not as raised as the other ones are. You do have to put in a little extra effort when navigating the menu with the D-pad. But the good thing about the QWERTY keyboard and what you really want out of a phone like this is that the button placement does make a lot of sense. Just using it after a while, it feels like you could really like blindly type. So when you have a phone with a clamshell design, it is important for it to have a good hinge. You don't want it to feel like you're about to break it just by opening it. Yeah. And this phone does have a very solid hinge. Whenever you pull it all the way back, it does have a good snap to it. But there are different degrees of angles that you can keep it at and use it sort of like in a laptop sort of form. It's because the, the hinge is not spring assisted. Yes. It's meant to be stopped at really any point. So you can view it from different angles. When the phone is closed, navigating the menu is really snappy. The D-pad is pleasant to use, but really the only thing you would want to do is make calls and then read text messages. I doubt you're going to be typing too much using the pen pad. Especially when you have a QWERTY keyboard at your yeah. disposal. I mean, that's like the whole point of this kind of phone. And the screen, I feel like the outside, the colors are decent, but whenever you open it up and you see that inside screen, it is more vibrant. It is more colorful. And I do think with the screen on the outside being as small as it is, it does kind of give the illusion in QWERTY mode that the screen is bigger than it actually is, but I, I think it's all relative. Because when you're comparing the inside screen size to other phones, like regular candy bar phones, for example, right. it's really not that much bigger. If, if not, it, it's like the same size. There is a pretty advanced music player, at least compared to what other phone lines had at the time. All of your music is separated into categories like genre, artist, album, even with an option for playlist and shuffle and a proprietary digital music store called Vcast Music, which was a partnership with LG and Verizon to compete with the dominating iTunes media monster. And of course, the service is no longer available, so we can, we can no longer use it. This phone comes with two pre-installed games, Pac-Man and Tetris. The selection might seem kind of sparse, but luckily these games are infinitely replayable. They've always worked well on mobile devices, same case here. There's also VZ Navigator, which is a GPS navigation app, which was a really big deal when you consider that most people were still dropping big money on the Garmin line of GPS systems at this time. Not even Garmin in particular, just GPS systems were, were so prevalent as the replacement for printing out directions via MapQuest or something like that. The idea of having a Maps app on your phone wasn't so commonplace. In VZ Navigator was Verizon trying to introduce this as part of the phone experience is having this map in your pocket. To be fair, to use this service, there was a monthly subscription fee through Verizon, 
So the outcome cost of either using this or a more refined GPS system like the Garmin would mostly depend on how often you chose to use it and the convenience cost of using your phone battery on long trips for directions. The service is down, unfortunately, but there is archive footage of what these programs look like, which seem to just be simple GPS programs, but still a pretty cool addition to a phone with a lot of practical features already. And now for the camera test. We took a couple of shots with the camera, uh, just a couple of vanity shots. You can definitely tell that this was shot with a two megapixel camera, but you can still, if the image is close enough on the subject that you're trying to capture, you can still tell. Now, if you look at this video footage, uh, it's like night and day. Yeah, it's very grainy. It doesn't have a smooth frame rate at all. Yeah, well, it's just super pixelated. And whenever you have spots of like darkness on it, you can tell that the quality really goes down if you look at the shadows. Right, it doesn't do well in low light at all. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I still think the, the images, at least if you are close enough to the focus of what you're trying to take an image of, are not that bad. Yeah, I think uh, they're pretty good. Yeah, the video's kind of a different story. This is a mic and sound check. This is Phone Dog doing a microphone and sound check. There's also going to be video, but it's a microphone and sound check. How's that? It's pretty good. So that's the, the LG NV VX9900. What do you think about this phone? I think it's a great phone. I think it did a lot of things right and maybe a few things wrong. The form and design could have been touched up a bit better, but you know, yeah. the functionality of the phone is great. I'm still not a big fan of the camera on the back. I think it looks kind of ridiculous, especially whenever you're trying to type. But as far as a phone that is trying to excel at being a multimedia phone, this is what you listen to your music on, what you receive calls, text messages yeah, on. Like the all-in-one device. It's a gaming device for its time. This, I mean, I would have been so happy with this phone as a kid. Yeah, me too. I think it was a great first phone in the line that they were going for. Right, and it's interesting to see when we cover these future phones, uh, how this phone is going to inform the rest. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Yep. We done? Yep.